What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. In today's lesson, we're going to learn 15 phrasal verbs that can appear in the fourth part of the use of English exam at first CAE and CPE exams by Cambridge. In this part of the exam, sentence transformation, they usually test your knowledge of phrasal verbs. If you're not planning on taking this exam, I think this video can be also useful because we're going to learn 15 common phrasal verbs. Are you ready? If so, grab a pen and your vocabulary notebook and let's get going. So let's get started. The first phrasal verb on my list today is to put something off, which means to postpone. One simple sentence, the meeting has been put off until next Monday. Number two, to put someone up. It means to let someone stay at your home and provide accommodation. Two examples here, I didn't stay in a hotel, my friend put me up. And one more, if you come to Valencia, I can put you up. Number three, to do something up. It means to decorate a house so that it looks more attractive. One simple sentence, she's having her apartment done up. Number four, to come or to go down with something. It means to catch or show signs of an infectious illness. For example, I'm afraid I'm coming or going down with a cold. Number five, to live up to something. It usually goes with someone's expectations. To live up to someone's expectations. And it means to be as good as what was expected or promised. One simple sentence, Australia lived up to my expectations. Number six, to turn someone or something down. It means to decline and reject. And we usually talk about an invitation, offer, job, proposal, request, etc. For example, in the end, I turned down the offer. Number seven, to turn up or to show up. It means to arrive somewhere, especially late or unexpectedly. For example, he showed up late for the meeting. And guys, before we continue and learn more phrasal verbs, just a super quick reminder. If you like today's lesson, please don't forget to like it and make sure you're subscribed to English Bits if you like my channel. Thank you for all your love and support. Number eight, to come across. It means to make a particular impression. One simple sentence, I don't know him much but he comes across as a nice guy. And we can also say to come across someone or something, which means to meet or find someone or something by chance. For example, I came across a picture of us in the book I was reading. Number nine, to take someone in. is usually used in passive. And it means to deceive or trick someone. Let's put it into a simple sentence. I was taken in by his charm. He's such a smooth talker. A smooth talker is someone who is really good at persuading others to do what they want. Let's move on to number 10. To get around or round to doing something. Important, you have to use ing after two. It means to do something that you have intended to do for a long time. For example, it's time I got around to cleaning my windows. Number 11, to put up with someone or something. It means to tolerate or to bear. For example, I'd find it hard to put up with the rainy weather if I moved to the UK. 
Number 12, to turn out to be. It means to develop or to become someone or something in the end. For example, the hotel turned out to be better than I had expected. And one more simple sentence here, he turned out to be a pain in the neck. Number 13, to bring something about. It means to cause something to happen or to take place. For example, the decrease of the human attention span has at large been brought about by social media. Two more to go, number 14, to speak up. It has two meanings. The first one is to speak more loudly so that other people can hear you. For example, I can't hear you. Could you speak up, please? And the second meaning of to speak up is to express your opinion freely, especially to protest about something. One simple sentence, if you don't agree, don't be afraid to speak up. And last but not least, number 15, to set off or to set out. It means to start a journey. And the last simple sentence for today, we'd better set off or set out early tomorrow. So guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson and found it useful. And I really hope it will stand you in good stead when taking your Cambridge exams. And of course, if you learned some new phrase verbs, please don't forget to give this lesson a huge thumbs up, subscribe to English Bits, and remember that you can catch me on Instagram where I teach English every day. Thank you for joining me today and see you next Wednesday and then next Sunday. Have a lovely day. Ciao for now.